Welcome to the third video of a multiple part series regarding horse colors. In this video, I'll teach you the basics of horse color genetics by focusing specifically on white markings and debunking a few other myths. Part 2 of this video will go over Appaloosa patterns and white genes. But before we go any further, the Simply Equine YouTube channel is a channel dedicated to making horse-related educational content. Subscribe if you'd like to support the channel, as in the next video we'll be going over part two of white markings, which are Appaloosa markings and genes that cause the horse to turn completely white. Okay, now back to the video. For the sake of organization, this video will be broken down into certain fundamental pieces that will be timestamped in the description below. The first myth that this video will debunk is that gray horses are white. In actuality, gray is a gene that causes the horse's coat color to fade over time. Also, a horse that has the gray gene is born their base color and then eventually grays out. The other myth is that Taviano and Overo are the same thing. And the final myth is that Pinto horses are a breed. In actuality, Pinto is only used to describe their color. Remember how I talked about how horse coat colors can be seen in layers? In this video, we'll be talking about the third layer. This includes all white markings. Let's start with gray. Gray is a dominant gene responsible for gradual and progressive depigmentation of a horse's coat. This means that the gene will slowly remove pigment from the coat and cause the horse to fade to a white or flea bitten color as it ages. However, gray horses are not born gray. This is similar to human hair graying over time. Usually a horse is completely grayed out by the age of six or eight. This is not to be confused with a white horse as gray horses still have black skin unlike white horses that will be discussed in the next video. Next we have frame overo. This creates a pinto horse pattern where a solid frame around white spotting is created. The white spotting is usually in a horizontal orientation and it has jagged edges. The base color usually stays on the back and legs, but the face and usually the belly turns white. These markings will not extend down to the legs or the top of the back. If a horse has two copies of the Overo gene, it will develop lethal white syndrome which usually causes the horse to die within a few days of birth. While these markings are heavily desired, it is important that two frame of error horses are not bred together. Next we have Tabiano. This is another dominant gene that creates pinto patterning. These patterns are usually in a vertical orientation and have rounded edges. The markings usually extend from the legs up or the back down. The horse's face and tail are usually left their base color. Roan is another dominant gene that causes white markings. In this case, white hair is mixed in with the base coat color. Usually the head and legs remain dark, but white hairs are mixed in with the horse's body, creating a faded color. A black horse will become blue roan, a bay horse will become bay roan, and a chestnut horse will become red roan. Last but not least, we have splashed white. This is another dominant gene that causes depigmentation in the horse's coat. Specifically, it makes the horse look like it was dipped in paint feet first. This causes a large blaze on its head, extended white markings on the legs, and variable white spotting on the belly. It'll often give the horse pink skin and blue eyes. So that's it for this video. The rest of the video can be used to quiz yourself on what you learned today.